Hi there, in this video I want to uh, use ArcGIS Pro to um, extract values from my slope, my steepness measurement in this area of Austria. Um, I want to extract some values um, and effectively allocate to my railway network. Now the railway network is, is from OSM so uh, okay, dubious quality but, but it's, it's a good demonstration data set. And the SRTM, of course, is not the uh, greatest accuracy. This is SRTM 30. So it's, it's um, so take the sort of level of accuracy of, of, of this session with a, with a pinch of salt. Um, and hopefully with your work, you'll have things like LIDAR, uh, et cetera, um, and sort of 1 to 12, 50 mapping and all, and all that sort of thing. So you'll be able to get uh, much more accurate result, accurate results, but the tool set's the same. Um, the the way you you do this is will, will be the same, um, and certainly the the a way I I I want to do this. The way I want to do this is actually to to take start and end point of my network, all these railway um, links segments, and uh, allocate a steepness measurement to each one. So I sort of get a get a view of of, uh, um, of start and end points of links um, and what the uh, uh, gradient um, may look like. So the first thing to do is to grab my start and end points. So I'm going to do this in the tools and you can use uh, this tool feature vertices to points. Um, so I'll click on that and then it's the railways Oh yes, it is clipped railways, by the way. I've only got a small sort of section. Um, and I'm gonna create, um, I'll, I'll re reduce that name a bit, I think. Railways. Let's see. And um, the features I wanna grab, the um, points I wanna make are start and end. But of course we could have sort of all of them or just the midpoint and that sort of thing. But I'm gonna I'm gonna grab start and end. Let's run that. So now you can see I've got lots of nice points, which are effectively the start and end of links of segments on this network. Let's turn off the actual railway lines themselves so you can see they're all dots. So what I'd now I'd like to do is take data from the underlying raster and sort of assign them to uh, th th this point, um, making a new table, a new, new, new data set. So that tool is extract values to a table. That's what I'm going to look for. You could just type extract up here and then you'll find extract values to a table, extract cell values from a set of rasters to a table based on a point or polygon feature class. So I click on that. My input are those vertices, um, as features that is. Uh, the raster I'm looking at is the slope, so the measurement of steepness. My output table, extract values to table, well, three, um, okay, I'll leave that. Um, if you were using lots of rasters here, you would put some kind of um, naming convention in there and you, you'll, you'll see why in a minute. I'll do that anyway but there is only one raster so it's a bit sort of unnecessary to do this here but if you had more than one you'd, you, you would probably find it useful to do that and I'll, I'll show you what happens now that I've done that. So let's just run. So it's finished. There is a little warning it'll be about node data I should think. Yeah so you know there's some node, node data in there so be any values um, which is fine that's expected so what's it created well if you look at the extract values to table three what a, an amazing name um, open you've got a value steepness factor and um, you have also the um, feature ID uh, of, of the railway vertices that are used but also um, the source ID raster, which will just say one all the way down it, because there is only one 
And if I just open this, it just gives the name of the raster an OID1. So the OID is what it's uniquely generated in here for all the results. And this is an OID that it's generated for you, which is why over here you see I put output raster names table SRTM. Um, well, it's created this table and, and picked up the name of the raster. So if you had lots of raster, you, rasters, you'd be listed there with um, a different number in here to reference. So it's good when you've got loads of rasters, you may want to do that. So um, what's this saying? Well, if we sort this descending, we get some high values at the top. So this is sort of on on, certainly near some steep areas. So what we can say is, uh, well, whereabouts are these? Um, sort of start and end points um, of the railway network that have such a high um, um, steep measurement. Well, the source ID there is our figure that we can use. So I'll just copy that. And um, I could use locate, but actually I could just go and select my attributes as another option. So in here, um, the input um, select by attribute well what I'm going to be looking for is the railway vertices I'm going to create a new expression where object ID is equal to that so that source ID feature you see came from the railway vertices uh, so now I press OK and you can see selected features one it's that one there and look when I click it zooms straight in that's looking like a pretty um, sort of steep area there's lots of dark um, uh, in there and um, we can have a look at the data there. So yeah, slope itself has come up with a very high figure. So, but what is this? Rudolph's barn, there you go. That's what we're talking about here. So let's just turn off the slope and sure enough, we can get an idea of uh, the actual geography, what's going on and um, the place names. So it's, it's that point there that's highlighted um, so there you go so that's a quick way to find out where that figure is um, where that point is and um, anyway I hope that helps there'll be a few more um, videos on this subject but, um, but hopefully that one will get you started on extracting um, sort of raster values from the slope data that we made before and um, pulling them out into a table uh, for further analytical work. So I hope that helps.